All right, let's get started. Today I want to take a pretty deep dive into the machining boundary function. Um, the machining boundary function is a, a, a containment option for basically all of the 3D op or all of the 3D tool paths within HSM works, um, with the exception of flow. It's not in flow, and, and we're really going to focus today on how it applies to the finishing strategies. So not so much adaptive clearing and pocket clearing. Most of what we're going over will apply to those, but uh, there's some some little intricacies. Um, and really, there's just more options in some of these. Um, let's hop into one of these. Let's look at contour. You can see it's it's in here. Same set of options. Um, let's jump into scallop. Scallop's a good example. It has an, another option here, but you can see the basic functionality is the same. All the defaults are in there. And um, let's jump into ramp. Ramp's got it. Like I said, it's in all of them. Let's look. Take a look at it within parallel. I think parallel is the easiest or the clearest way of explaining all of this or, or taking a look at it. Um, first, let's let's just talk about what containment means. What, is, what does that mean? Um, so all of these tool paths or, or the, the ones that use um, the machining boundary function basically work by generating 2D tool paths that are aligned with the Z vector. So from this direction, they're going to come up with some uh, some orientation, you know, parallel is going to want to do uh, lines that are parallel at some parallel to each other at some angle in reference to X. You know, you would set that that angle in here, and and the step over the distance between the the uh, parallel lines. But it's basically just going to work its way back and forth. It's a really basic toolpath. But then it takes that that toolpath that exists on a two D plane and it projects it down onto the geometry. And all of these toolpaths, because they're 2D, uh, they, the majority of them tend to really work best in specific scenarios. So you don't just really want to um, apply them to everything. But let's see what it looks like if we just take and basically turn everything off as wide as we can. We'll get this toolpath that, that really just blankets the whole thing, like I said, in this 2D toolpath, and it just projects it down onto the geometry and everywhere that the tool has a, a point that it wants to contact at it will uh, you know stop at that point because it doesn't want to violate your model ignore that um, and it just continues along on its merry way where it's contacting in this case we told it to uh, we allowed it to continue out to the bounding box uh, you know the box that bounds the model and it's limited to the top of the part and the bottom of the part. We're not letting it go down further. And But otherwise, uh, that, that's all it's doing, right? It's going to work its way back and forth along the model, and, and you'll wind up with something that kind of resembles your part. Um, but it's really suboptimal. So in order to optimize it, we want to contain it. We want to tell it, well, we'll use this toolpath in some of the shallow areas, because that's sort of what Parallel's good at. We'll use a different toolpath in areas that are steep and maybe there might be some uh, some details that we want to bring out, so maybe we'll use a different toolpath for that. In this case, we're not going to be able to do everything from one orientation, so we'd want to use some other toolpaths to sort of carve out some of this inside. Um, so let's take a look at how we do that. Like I said, machining boundary is a containment option. It's one of many options you can use. It's probably the primary one, but uh, slope, rest machining, check surfaces, uh, your heights tab, the distance, the area between the top and the bottom is all that it's going to look at to to apply that to so it's a form of containment but uh, but machining boundary is probably the most prolific within it you have a few options you have a bounding box option which I used you have a silhouette option which basically takes the part as it's aligned here it finds the silhouette and contains the toolpath using that you also have the option to directly select geometry you can select faces and it projects them up onto a, onto a 2D plane. Um, you can select edges, and they'll project up onto a 2D plane. As within the rest of HSM works, when you're selecting edges, you have some options for how those edges are going to propagate. We can go over that some other time. I'm not going to get into it. Um, but basically, uh, you, you know, you, and you can also select sketches. You can select uh, basically anything within here. You can select features. Um, all of it, though, in any instance, it's going to take the bounds of that face and project it up. It's going to take the exact 
sketch geometry that you select and project that up and then it will contain the toolpath accordingly. So um, in this case, let's say we want to contain it within here. Or actually, we've got more examples using that. Let's say we want to contain it within there. So then, following down, you have some more options. You have three options within here. Tool inside boundary, tool center on boundary, tool outside boundary. I'm gonna click generate on here. But then I'm gonna pop into another area just to, because I think there's a clearer way of showing this. If we imagine that we've taken a slice out of here, it would look something like this, right? And here's where we're trying to contain within, or I guess in this case here, but it doesn't matter. <coughs> now, like I said, I've simplified this. We're gonna take a look at it in, a, in a, another part that just has this nice pretty sketch. And so imagine that this is the geometry that we've selected. This is still that same cross section. This geometry has been projected up and we have this, this limit. And like I said, we have our three options. We have inside, which is effectively this, right? It's allowing the tool, the entire tool, the edge of the tool to go directly up to our boundary. And it's keeping it driven down in Z to the point where the tangent is touching the part. Likewise, the, the more similar one to that is outside. Outside lets the tool come up and past, staying in contact until it's made it all the way outside of the boundary. So you probably have guessed, ooh, center stops it at the center. Now let's take a look at why those probably aren't really the option that we want to use here. Inside would allow it to go here but there's all of this material, all of this surface from this tangent point up to the end of the surface that doesn't get machined. Center will get us pretty close. It'll let it go to about that point. But really there's some wasted motion there. We only care to finish the surface out to this point. And so obviously, allowing it to go even further out to the point where the tool is outside has even more wasted motion. Obviously there's scenarios where those will work perfect. Um, if instead your boundary were on this and you wanted to finish up to here, tool on center would probably be a great option. Very, very simply get you the exact point. And likewise, um, in, a, in a lot of cases, outside will be useful as well. Um, say for finishing this surface, you may want it to come all the way out. Um, to be honest, I don't use outside that often. Um, so th there is sort of a, a fourth option, and it's it's found in this contact point boundary option. And you might have figured out what that does. But let's demonstrate it. When selected in conjunction with the center, it allows the tool to continue up beyond the edge allowing the edge of the cutter to, to extend beyond the boundary up until the point where the cutter's tangency contacts the boundary. Basically finding the exact point that we want. So let's take a look at it in practice. I have right here four different operations that all basically have the same settings with just that one switch made. Tool center on boundary. These ones are all being contained within this geometry. And let's take a look. This one was tool center. And as you can see, the center. Well, let's even take a. As you can see, the tool center is aligned with that. And here again, if, if we were allowing it to go to this point, all of this is left unmachined using this strategy. Not what you want inside boundary is going to be even worse. Let's come up here to the blue. Here you can see the edge of the cutter is being held within that boundary. All of this is left uncut.
by this strategy. Definitely not what we want. This one will get us close because this is nearly a 90 degree curve. But as you can see, it's coming past. In this case, it's not by a lot, but still not exactly what we want. So finally, let's take a look at the version of the toolpath with contact point boundary set. And you can see within the SolidWorks graphics capabilities that the toolpath is trimmed exactly at the point where the, where the tangency hits the boundary. Perfect. All right, and uh, let's go back at it again. I've got, I realized I forgot to cover some functionality and uh, I've got a little pro tip as well. So uh, we'll, let's kill two birds with one stone, as they say. Um, let's take a look at this operation. It looks pretty ugly, right? You can see the toolpaths diving down. What I was trying to accomplish here is I took that same above operation, I duplicated it, it's still using tool center on boundary and, and contact boundary point, contact point boundary, but I've altered the selection to include this geometry instead of this geometry. Um, and that causes an issue because uh, a couple factors come together. This is a 90 degree edge. So it's really critical that this be perfect. And unfortunately, because things uh, in, in calculations are, uh, are, are better when they're not perfect, we apply some tessellation and a, and a tolerance. And that tolerance applies to the machining boundary. And so what we get are places where the boundary is correct and places where it's just barely not correct. And in some of those cases, it allows the tool to dive off like this, and that's not what we want. So how can we remedy that? So I didn't cover this in the main video, um, but there's an option for some additional offset, and that's pretty self-explanatory, and the tooltip does a good job. It, uh, it just allows you to enter a number in here, which offsets our our projected geometry either positive or negative. And we can use that negative offset to our advantage here by just inputting a, a integer that's slightly larger than our tolerance and remembering that our tolerance is going to apply to this. So it's actually, it's basically just going to take and make it so that our max tolerance winds up perfect and our min tolerance winds up inside the boundary. Whereas before, our max tolerance was winding up outside of our boundary and our min tolerance was winding up inside. We were splitting the difference but getting some error. Let's see how it works out. Now you can see we get a much, much cleaner toolpath. Let's take a look. Now the tool is proceeding up basically perfectly. Might be off by about a tenth. Um, but I don't think you'll ever notice that. And it's much better than the alternative which is a, probably a broken tool and an ultra gouged part. Um, lastly, there's one more, some, there's some hidden functionality in here as well. And it doesn't apply quite so much to the parallel toolpath, um, but oftentimes it applies to uh, contour pretty well. Um, I, it, and it only applies with the silhouette mode enabled. Um, this is only visible if you right click in an open area and choose Show Advanced, some of the pages will have some stuff that jumps out. This, this is a silhouette aperture. And what it does is, even though we're looking at this toolpath from the top, it basically treats the, the view as a lens, much like swapping to perspective does. And it just allows, the, the, uh, it allows this view to see a little bit more. And sometimes that's great and sometimes it's not. Uh, I think the default is oftentimes a little bit too big and it can cause you to get some similar noise. Oftentimes dropping this down, if you're having issues figuring out what's going on, to about, a, to about 0.01, uh, it'll do a lot of favors.